This video will take a new author or an author with writer's block from a brainstorming process through the steps of organizing the mystery and ultimately to fleshing out the characters. I will also touch on two or three extra steps, which are only optional, to do to set yourself up for easier marketing right from the beginning. This brainstorming a mystery worksheet a link to it will be posted below, takes you from a blank page through the process of choosing a crime and or mystery, and it leads you through the process of sketching the skeleton of a mystery. This is a three-page worksheet that is divided into sections, each one asking you a series of questions that will lead you into filling in a potential storyline for a new novel. This worksheet alone will wipe away any writer's block and it will also help a beginner get over the first hump of a workable storyline and where to begin. After finishing the brainstorming worksheet, an experienced writer will be over their writer's block and well on their way to a new novel. This is a close-up of all of the crimes or mysteries that appear in the brainstorming a mystery worksheet. This video, however, will cover what happens after you find a workable storyline. This is geared for new writers or old writers open to new methods to make their work better or more efficient. By the end of the novel brainstorming process, the characters will build themselves based on linking the suspects to the victim and to each other. So the characters will form themselves but they will be stick figures, some more flat than others. It's important to know for newbie writers that all mystery novels, with the exception of series novels, start with stick figures. All characters in a multiple suspect mystery start out as flat figures until it's safe to flesh them out. What do I mean by safe to flesh them out? The reason is that the crime, victim, suspects, and chronology of clues to drop must all line up and fit together like a puzzle before you can fully flesh out a character. For example, in order to have four suspects, you may suddenly realize you need to change the employment of a victim, or you may need to add a wife or a child in order to flesh out suspect number three's motivation for a crime. If you flush out your characters too soon, it makes fitting all the suspects, clues, and alibis harder to do. By starting with stick figures, you can assign a position in life or a hobby, a job, a sister, or a child into the story as needed as you set up the roster of suspects with individual motivations. This will prevent you from having to throw away already written chapters or scenes. It will also prevent you from falling in love with a character before he or she actually fits into the storyline. Each plot line will need more than one or two suspects because readers of mysteries like to be presented with one clue at a time and have the chance to try to figure the mystery out. This is part of the enjoyment of reading the book and also an expectation of a mystery reader. So before you even waste any time on fleshing out the characters, decide on the suspects, the villain, the motivations, and the alibis. It's easier than you may think. First, choose who will be the most likely suspect. Make the clues dropped first or at the scene of the crime, point to the most likely suspect. But the earlier clues will ultimately point to most or all of the suspects. Then choose who will be the ultimate culprit or culprits and choose the clue that will reveal his or her identity. This clue and revelation will be hidden until part four of the plot structure. Then work on a chronological list of clues to drop. In the beginning, you will want the clues to point to more than one suspect. At the same time, add in the alibis and how they will be revealed, and then either prove true, collapse on themselves, 
or turn out to be bold-faced lies. By the time you come to the end of this chronology process, you will have already added some background information and other personal traits to the characters that are crucial to make everything fit and line up. This process will automatically build up characters and they will go from flat stick figures into two dimensional figures. At this point, seasoned writers should be ready to start laying out the novel scenes. However, newbie writers may want to pause and focus on two or three short steps before moving on to fleshing out the final characters and laying out the scenes. You may be tempted to ignore these steps in your excitement to get started on the new novel, but if you take the hour or so to do a tiny bit of research, you may thank me for it later on. The first short step is to focus for a moment on what ultimate three categories you will place your finished book in. Amazon.com allows three categories for each book, and knowing what category you are targeting can be very helpful before setting down to write the entire novel. Each category has subcategories that are set up by specific subgenres. For example, Magical realism, cozy fantasy, and historical fantasies are all fantasy books, but they all have different readers and different reader expectations. Your choice at this point will not be written in stone, but it will give you great direction and a destination. On the left, there is a snapshot of my YouTube video about finding and targeting the right category. I'll post the link in the description below. These are snapshots from Amazon.com pertaining to fantasy books and mystery books. Looking at the list to the left, the top category is fantasy, but underneath that category are many, many subcategories. These are now separated by subgenres. In other words, there is a subgenre under fantasy called fairy tales, which is different than just romantic fantasy, as distinguished from gaslamp fantasy and historical fantasy. Knowing where you are targeting will be helpful in the beginning so you can cater to this subgenre. On the right, you can see the top category is mystery, thriller, and suspense. Under that top category are a few subcategories. One example is crime fiction, but under crime fiction are seven subgenres. So depending upon what crime you will choose or the type of mystery, you can target these subgenres specifically. Let's go to Amazon and take a few minutes to see what I'm talking about here in greater detail. Now, there is another reason to take the time to investigate the categories and subcategories and sub-subcategories. And that is because it is much easier to rise to the top of a bestseller list in a subcategory and even easier in a sub-subcategory. Let me tell you what, let me show you what I mean by that. This is the romance, bestsellers in romance. Now, in this category, you're going to be competing with all the Top Gun authors and all the Top Gun publishers, okay? But every time you click into a subcategory, like this one here is bestsellers in clean and wholesome romance, this is a much easier category to dominate, so to speak, because you are limiting the competition. And as you can see by looking over here underneath romance, Amazon now has all of these categories that are underneath the one top category. And because it collects so much information about what readers like and don't like, they are continually adding new categories as well. So as I have said before, or maybe I didn't say it, 
But as you are now coming to the end of plotting a new novel, would it be easier to do some marketing if you knew that you were going to be targeting a sub-subcategory like this one, the billionaires under romance? It's easy enough in the beginning to change a few facts about a character to create a billionaire situation so that you can make ultimately marketing your book that much easier. Here is another category underneath um, literary fiction, which is contemporary Christian fiction. There are many Christians in the country who like to read Christian books and to dominate in this category it would be much easier. Here's another one. Under romance, you can specifically target gothic romances. Here is the top selection, contemporary literary fiction. Okay, now this is much smaller than the literary fiction where all of the big guns are going to be, but this one would be easier to climb from the bottom to the top of the bestseller list. Here's another one. This one is a specific category for genre fiction. And what this means is that there are all of these genres that you can uh, target to. And so again, these sub sub genres are even easier than the than genre fiction. Let's just look at a few more. Here is bestsellers in women's literary fiction, contemporary American fiction, private investigator mysteries, traditional detective mysteries. There's also police procedurals, uh, traditional detectives, women sleuths. So looking into what the possibilities are for these subcategories can help you in the very beginning stages to position your novel for the easiest time in marketing. Research your subgenres. What type of expectations do the readers of that genre have? Each genre has certain settings, atmospheres, tropes, and other things that the readers love to encounter in their favorite stories. Think about what settings and stages you can use for each of your scenes that will deepen and enhance your characters as well as your entire story. Think about and review all of the novels that may have inspired your present book. What can you learn from them about atmosphere and settings? What are reader expectations in these categories and subcategories? Think about and review all of the novels that may have inspired your present novel. What can you learn from them about atmosphere and settings? In the same way that movie makers travel the world looking for beautiful settings to shoot in, you may want to travel around the internet looking for snapshots of beautiful backdrops you can use to write your scenes against. Let me give you an example from my own gothic romance study that I did over the last year. I read the top 10 to 15 classic gothic and vampire novels and short stories and took particular note of any recurring themes, scenery, stages, settings, tropes, and motifs used in all of these stories. What I found is that many of the books all shared similar details, but they just fit differently into each story. Here's an example from my gothic romance study. Many of the stories all have a gothic looking manor house or mansion. They all, including the gothic movies, by the way, have a horse driven carriage or two. There's usually a cemetery scene, a graveside ceremony scene with a priest with church bells in the background, storms, thunder, lightning, lights going out, characters walking with candelabra, windows blowing open, creaking stairs, hidden rooms, old family or village legends, etc. So my advice is to see how many of your particular genre tropes or reader expectations you want to include before even plotting the novel. Sometimes it only takes a tweak or two to fit comfortably into three different categories. I'll just take one more moment to give you a helpful technique that I discovered in my own writing. I needed a rehab building for one of my police procedural stories. I found a real life rehab building and took a snapshot of it. 
Then on a separate page in Scrivener, I wrote the description of the building looking at the pictures. This allowed me to focus only on the descriptions of the building outside the greater novel. It gave me a chance to write the description, edit it, re-edit it, and polish it, all of which took only 20 minutes. I wound up with a much richer building description than I would have if I just added a few words of description while writing the overall novel. I found this exercise and technique so helpful that I pass it on to you. Looking at the scene above, how would you describe it? The final step is to finish fleshing out the characters according to the story itself. They will be two-dimensional at the end of this worksheet and it's much easier to enrich a two-dimensional character than to start from square one and create one out of thin air. While fleshing them out, it's important to think of the character arcs. Not every character arcs. Only the main and significant characters will arc over the storyline, but think ahead of ways that you will show that growth or descent over the four sections of the plot. If you are using a three-part structure, then you will arc them over the three sections. I will have a checklist for these steps posted below the video in case you want to download it, as well as another link to download the original first Brainwashing a Mystery novel worksheet. If you liked the video or learned anything, I hope you will give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. To the right are all of my books that are available for purchase on Amazon.com. Most of them are in Kindle Unlimited. I'll see you in the next video.